Um, morning this morning, I'm just going to talk a little bit about you know, what J Johnson & Johnson is doing. It's an amazing technology over the last couple of years. Uh, we're really trying to get the applications um, in the medical space, in the pharmaceutical space, and the consumer health space. So I'll take a little bit of your time to just talk a little bit about what J&J &J is, the, big, the company, what it does, a couple slides around it, uh, specifically on the supply chain, how large it is, and you'll see a little video. Um, and then specifically, I'm going to talk about what's called the personalized health solutions. Um, I think it's a great application for healthcare um, where this additive technologies like 3D printing can make a huge difference. And then uh, I'll go into a little bit more about you know, how we are, how, what we are doing and how we are doing the strategy type of things. And then show a little bit about the portfolio of uh, projects we are working on and then close it out from there. J&J &J is a, a large company. Uh, we are broadly healthcare-based company. Uh, we really want to be in the forefront of innovation uh, from a healthcare perspective. Uh, we are equally balanced between pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and consumer health products. Um, so we are constantly, constantly driving innovation um, into, the, into the pipeline of things. And we feel that 3D printing and IoT technologies really would help the next many years to come uh, bringing a lot more innovative products to really help our patients and, um, and customers. We have uh, products from pharmaceuticals, um, and we make a lot of medical device products. As you can see on this slide, um, you know the variety of uh, uh, products we manufacture and deliver to the customers. We deliver, you know, we touch almost a billion customers every day, um, and so the supply chain what we have is going to be very very complex. We have to deal with a lot of variety of products. And uh, this video will show you a little bit about the complexity. When J&J &J began, there were about one billion people on the planet. Today, our company serves one billion people every day, all over the world, at every stage of life, with the most advanced medicines treating hepatitis, HIV, various forms of cancer, and other medical conditions. We are the world's largest medical device manufacturer with innovations in orthopedics and surgery, as well as vision care, diabetes care, and a broad range of consumer health care products. Every day, the Johnson & Johnson supply chain earns trust with quality and reliability in those moments when it matters most. Fast changes in healthcare and technology are driving a revolution. We've responded by transforming our supply chain into the engine that helps drive J&J's innovation portfolio. From customer interaction and demand sensing, to 3D printing, to innovations in highly regulated manufacturing and streamlined delivery, we are driven by global need and inspired by our credo to widen the boundaries of what is possible. And we are there with our R&D and commercial partners and more than 60,000 people, more than 350 distribution centers globally, filling over 100,000 orders a day with our 350,000 SKUs in nearly any hospital operating room, retailer, pharmacy, and in millions of homes around the world, J&J &J is there with a supply chain that looks at healthcare end to end, striving to serve the next two billion people and earn their trust, one customer at a time. So as you see that, we do have a very complex supply chain, a uh, variety of products, uh, but bulk of what we do now is, you see is a lot of standard products. Uh, we think that, you know, whether it's an implant or an instrument or a medicine, uh, it's always a standard product which has to fit for many people. The 3D printing offers a very unique opportunity for us to personalize and able to deliver something very specific for each and every customer of us. So this is very exciting times for us. What's happening in the healthcare is, um, as you see that, it's not just in Europe, it's in US, across the globe, there's healthcare costs are really going high. Um, there is a um, lot of what is called as outcome-based reimbursement. Uh, unless there is a clear clinical outcome, you know, the reimbursements but get, could get impacted, whether it's an insurance or payer system. A uh, lot of standardized product, lack of personalization across, um, and so on and so forth. So just overall, it's a larger, larger cost of healthcare. 
we believe that the technologies like these, right, um, 3D printing, uh, bioprinting, um, robotics, uh, various type of logistic technologies, the confluence of these two things can help really solve some of the problems we are seeing in healthcare. So if you look at this, um, you know, you, we talked about healthcare opportunities. We talked about what it needs, right? Um, but also these technologies can bring some advancements um, and, and it can enable certain solutions. The one area we feel between these two problem and, uh, and the technologies is this personalized health solution. So I'm going to take a little bit, couple more slides on the, on the personalized health solutions and how 3D printing is really helping um, transform the pipeline of products we have. If you look at these workflows, um, you know, for example, uh, if you take a person has uh, some kind of an injury, uh, we take a CT scan or an MRI uh, and design a particular implant or an instrument for the person and able to print it um, on site in a hospital or in a manufacturing site and able to deliver very personalized, customized instruments for the person. Similarly, in a, in a consumer space, using the same workflow, a uh, person can take a picture on a smartphone, um, able to design something, uh, you know, some kind of a consumer product um, right on the phone and able to print it at home or print it at a consumer center and deliver that. So if we can leverage and create one ecosystem, one network for companies like J&J, &J, which deals with healthcare products and also consumer products, that we'll be able to use that to deliver a lot of personalized solutions for our patients. We believe that there is an ecosystem we can develop, right, which has analytics as the, the, as the center of it all, that we can connect with the customers very directly, um, you know, get their needs, and able to convert that into valuable personalized product and, and able to deliver it non-demand and personalized manner. J&J um, &J has been a company which has been treating sicknesses for a long time. Um, we believe that it is time for us to transition um, from treating a sickness at a time to more of an overall wellness for everybody else. So um, these technologies like 3D printing, bioprinting, robotics, really can help us move, not just J&J, &J, the overall industry more into taking care of, you know, health of a person overall from the beginning to the end. With 3D printing journey, um, initially we started, you know, you probably know 3D printing has been around for many decades. Uh, it's recently has, you know, has grown substantially. I mean, somebody was telling me this morning, the size of this uh, TCT show has grown three, four times over the last couple of years. So it is huge. Uh, fascinating to see how much technology, how many um, new machines are coming out every couple of months. Uh, so we started out with prototyping, doing type of things. Um, the key is for us in j, &J is about new materials, um, really finding more and more diverse um, engineered materials which can really deliver those medical products. Uh, so we've been spending last couple of years really working through that um, and kind of piloting a lot of products through that one. Um, what we believe is it is slowly transforming how we manufacture products and eventually we'll get to a point that uh, our goal is to create more an on-demand manufacturing, um, that whether it is the instruments are sitting in a hospital or some clinical setting, or it could be in some kind of a distributed center that we'll be able to provide more real-time on-demand products to our customers moving forward. Um, so just kind of high level what we've been working on. Um, you know, we can't do it alone. Uh, we have a lot of partners. I see a lot of them here today. Uh, we are seven or eight different strategic partners, uh, a lot of 50 plus various technology partners we work with. Um, and if you see the products we are working on or working towards, uh, there's a lot of polymers, metals, ceramics, uh, bioprinting from a tissue side. Um, all those products, you know, slowly we are trying to get the pipeline changed. Uh, one of the important things what we believe on 3D side is designing for the additive manufacturing. Uh, the lot of conversions, we've been taking a traditionally designed product and trying to convert. Uh, I think that slowly need to change. Uh, it's a fascinating technology. We can bring a lot of innovation and freedom into that, which we haven't really capitalized on, all of us, I guess, across the board. So there is a lot of potential in that space, and we're going to continue to drive it. 
personalization is also going to be very important. Um, and we can find a lot more opportunities, a lot more innovation, how we can serve each patient one at a time. So um, also this technology is helping us speed to market. Um, really like if you can get um, manufacturing like our final product like prototypes during our, uh, during our R&D cycle uh, for design iterations uh, makes, makes the product you know, uh, speed to market very, very um, uh, faster compared to other things. So, um, so that's kind of mostly what we are working on. We believe there are five areas um, 3D printing can add value. So this, we are looking at both from a uh, medical devices, pharmaceutical, and consumer perspective. Definitely speed to market is a huge thing, uh, whether in pharmaceuticals, um, if you can um, use this technology to do bioprinting, to uh, able to screen drugs, um, um, a type of a thing, uh, we'll be able to speed up the cycle. Uh, in medical devices, if you can create products, uh, we're using 3D printing for design testing and so on and so forth, more manufacturing like, it'll speed up the, uh, speed up the definitely the getting the products into market. Same in the consumer space. Personalized products I talked about, it's a big value for us. Uh, manufacturing efficiency, I mean, you all know that, right? Um, you know, 3D, 3D and additive technology is really helping us um, make better tooling, fixtures, um, you know, overall manufacturing efficiency has gotten quite better with the additive technologies. The most important thing is the innovation in design, uh, which we are, you know, kind of behind. Uh, I see that this technology can really help us create a lot more um, innovative products if we can start with the design of it and able to do that. And lastly, we believe that overall, I mean, it may feel like it's a little more expensive to do additive technology at this point, one part at a time, but it will, um, over time, I think, from an end-to-end -end perspective, it'll be a lower cost um, as, we, as this technology is more net shape and more greener technology as we move forward. So all these five areas we are trying to maximize for all of our segments within Johnson & Johnson. So we are uh, broadly from execution perspective, um, we are divided into two different areas. One are the businesses we have on the right hand side as you see orthopedics, uh, we have pharmaceuticals, we have various cardiovascular companies, surgical companies. On the left hand side you see what the 3D printing technology group, which is my team, uh, is focusing on. So we, we, we work on different technical verticals, uh, a lot of focus on the tooling and fixturing. Uh, the second big one is on metals and ceramics, uh, both implants and instruments, uh, developing new materials, processes for that. Uh, polymers, same thing, implants and non-implantable polymers. Also a lot of effort is going about um, how do we um, create more personalized medicine, uh, whether it is printing a, med a tablet for uh, individual patient, or if it is creating, um, placing multiple APIs or drugs into single tablet, so it's personalized for individual person. So, also a lot of bioprinting work um, is happening in parallel, uh, printing your own tissue into organs or uh, organs which could be augmented for a, for a disease or some kind of an accident. Uh, microprinting is also a big area we are working to, more for the variables, uh, instruments which have very fine features and devices, um, printed electronics, and the lastly, some of the coding and net shape technologies. So we are, the way we approach this is, we don't do it ourselves. We definitely work with a lot of you here and a lot of the partners you see outside. Um, really develop the technology specific for our applications and deliver to the business as we move along, so. Very quickly, I don't, most of you may be already using this type of terminology. Uh, we use what's called the TRLs, which is a stage gate process. Um, my group does a lot of the work on TRL zero to five, more on the feasibility type of things, and eventually the businesses will take over and do the six to nine. It just kind of makes it, um, makes it very viable process to move from feasibility into commercialization in a very accelerated manner. Um, there are a lot of partners, um, but we're not showing all of them. Um, there are a bunch of strategic partners. You see a lot of them here. Um, we work with a lot of the universities um, to do a lot of front-end research from TRL 0 to 2. 
Um, there are also individual technology partners too um, on that who work with our specific technologies. We also have a um, lot of internal research and development centers within J&J. &J. Um, so we have five different development labs. Uh, as a one in Florida to do all polymers, uh, metals in Miami. Um, and also we have various development lines and, and labs. So once the material is you know, developed and process developed, uh, we kind of go into manufacturing feasibility at these development lines, uh, one in Cork and uh, Switzerland. Actually in UK we have one in Leeds. Um, we're doing some of the implant and custom products in that space. Um, and also we have worked with a lot of innovation centers uh, to connecting with the external partnerships and so on and so forth. So these are the type of the products we are e either commercially already out or very close to it. Uh, surgical instruments, there is a product called uh, Personalized Implant, uh, brand name TrueMatch. Um, there is a particular implant which is getting commercialized um, on the hip system. Um, we have two different companies. We recently acquired one on bioprinting site, I'm not, the other one is a collaboration um, we are working through. So there's a lot of, lot of things happening in J&J, &J, whether it's uh, instruments or medicines or, or consumer products. I just want to take a few minutes uh, quickly um, to talk about some of the lessons we learned over the last few years. Um, big company like J&J &J can be you know, easy, difficult to change, you know. So um, really promoting that risk-averse culture, um, risk-tolerant culture among, among change is going to be critical. So that was a struggle definitely for us as we moved through that one. The other big thing for us, especially if you're in the medical space and the pharmaceutical space, is the regulatory, um, regulatory uh, process and the strategy. Um, trying to be a little bit proactive about it, uh, really working with the regulatory bodies early on um, and kind of you know, help them understand the technology um, and how they would regulate moving forward is also going to be very critical. Um, initially, it's going to be a lot of changes happening at the same, you know, same time. Um, so, you know, we need to really learn about how to find the right partnerships, um, also trying to have the right, right strategy uh, as we move forward. And, you know, there's a lot of new things coming on every day. So, it's also important for us to try them quickly early on and fail. Uh, and once we go into more of a mature state, um, we won't have taking any, any risks moving forward. And, and also being very systematic about it, you know, having a systematic roadmaps, um, how we drive from um, you know, uh, product conversions uh, and new technology applications and so on and so forth. So that's kind of broadly, I want to give you a little feel for what's happening in Johnson & Johnson.